Legend and uh, having uh, played a number of games with the uh, Legend of the Five Rings core sets, uh, we've decided we're going to break down the uh, Dynasty cards and Conflict deck cards that come with uh, each clan as well as the neutral cards and give you our thoughts on them. Uh, so, uh, you know, that may assist you with deck building. Uh, it's also going to give you a detailed uh, description of every card that comes in this core set and what we think of it. Yeah, and we're going to be uh, doing a video for each clan, and we're going to be, uh, like Hal said, separating the Dynasty and the Conflict decks for each clan as well. So if there's certain clans you're more interested in, keep an eye out for those videos, and those will be uh, just tailored to those sp specific clans. What we're going to start with today is one of the two clans from our Starter Decks video of one core set, and it's the Crane Clan. Yeah, and you've, you've been quite a big fan of the Crane Clan. Yeah, the Crane Clan are a pretty enjoyable clan to play. They focus on the political conflicts, and uh, they uh, enjoy having their characters uh, in an honored state. Yeah, I uh, I wasn't sure about the Crane Clan. I actually didn't think I would uh, I would like them all that much compared to some other ones. And then in the last game, I played them, and uh, I I had a really fun time playing the Crane. So I, I'm I'm a I'm quite a fan of them as well now. All right, well let's get into it. And the first card we're gonna look at is. Shizuka Toshi, and that's the Crane Clan Stronghold. Yeah, yeah, so it's their Stronghold. Uh, out of your core sets, this is the only Stronghold that comes with the Clan, so this is the one you will be playing if you're playing the Crane Clan. And uh, let's have a look at its stats. So right off the bat, it's adding plus two to your province strength. Which of the Strongholds in the core set is pretty average? Yeah, I would say... I would say slightly better than average, because there's only the 1-3, which is but the grab class. Twos. And then the unicorn's a 0, and I think there's two ones. So it's slightly, sli slightly, slightly better. Um, but yeah, certainly you're not going to complain about that plus 2 buff. No, no, the plus 2 is plus two's really good. Only, only the crab uh, is a little bit better in that area. Then on um, beautiful artwork, I have to add. I think this this is just incredible art on the front. It does have the city trait. Hasn't been relevant yet, but could be in the future. And then it has action. During a political conflict, bow this stronghold. Choose a participating character with political skill two or lower. Bow that character. Yeah. So this is. We we were talking a little bit about this off camera, and this is this is good. We don't think it's in the top tier of uh, Stronghold abilities, but it is strong. I think it's very good. Um, there is going to be a political conflict in the turn. You have the ability to declare one. Your opponent is probably going to declare one as well, because that's, you know, otherwise they're only declaring one conflict against you. Um, yeah. So you're probably going to be able to use this on the offense or the defense. Um, there's... I think it's unlikely that someone's playing a deck where there's no character in play that doesn't have a political skill of two or less. Yeah, that's true. Most of the lower costed characters are going to. Um, and Crane, you're going to be pushing your political conflict, so they may have to defend with their higher costed characters who are better at military. Um, there's even some champions who have a political skill of two or less. The Crab Champion uh, immediately comes to mind. Yeah, I would argue that you're not really likely to see him going into a political conflict, though. The game's on the line. He's possibly going to. Yeah, but my, I don't know. My, my my argument is I think that this is something your opponent can play around, because if you're using this when you're the attacker, the defender has the first action. So even if they defend with a strength of one or two, they can, they can throw an ornate fan on. If it's dragon, they can throw Kitsuki's method. Um, before you'll have the opportunity to use this. If you're using this on the defense, you will have the first action, but then your opponent knows that you have it, so they're not going to, likely not going to play a, in a way where you're going to really be able to pull that off. I think it's good because it's forcing them to play in a different way, and I think there's situations where it'll trigger. We saw with the Crab where most of their, they have a lot of, a lot of chuds, and like you're much more likely to get it off against them, I think. But I think there are ways to play around this if you're playing against the Crane. Yeah, we have played a number of games with this, though, and I've never seen it not get a chud. Um, because the thing is, 
a, a lot of decks are gonna have to defend your political conflicts with like multiple chuds because they know this is in play. But, so, but I'm arguing that they would just defend with one and then put like a fan or put something else because you. But you, you don't always have that in your hand. Yeah, I don't know. I I think as we were, I think as we get better at the game, I think it becomes a bit worse and worse as people figure more out how to play around it. I think. But I, I out of the core set, I think I think it's pretty good. It has a uh, a starting fate value of seven. As do they all. Yeah, and then eleven honor, which that is good because that is on the higher side out of the core. Most clans being being at ten. I know Lion is a twelve, and then Lion is the highest. I believe it's Phoenix and Crane at at eleven. So the eleven is the eleven is really good. Um, and ten, ten influence like, to spend. Um, that's pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, I think I like this a little bit more than you do, but uh, ultimately I don't think either of us think it's among the top strongholds out of the core set. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I think you like it a bit more, but I, I definitely, I don't, I don't think it's bad. I think, I think it's, I think it's good. All right. So the next card we're looking at is the Crane Province that comes in the core set, and that is the Art of Peace. It's a four strength province, so pretty standard. Yeah, that that's quite standard. And then it has an interrupt. When this province is broken, dishonor each attacking character and honor each defending character. Now this one, I I am quite a fan of this. Um, I think I think this is quite strong. I think again, like the a little bit similar to the Lion Province, which is almost the uh, the sort of other side of the coin, the art of war, and says art of peace, where that you're also getting a benefit for the province actually being broken. Um, and this is this is doing what you want when you're the crane clan. You want to be honoring your your characters. You want to be dishonoring them. So I think this is better than the art of war, for the reason that it's a four strength instead of a three strength. Um, so with the four strength, as long as you're keeping some sort of unit around to defend attacks, they are going to have to commit a couple of units to that attack. Yeah. Um, that's not to negate the, the fact that drawing three cards is, is very nice, but I think having, you know, at least four characters change their status is very significant. Yeah. Um, or, or I should say at least three, maybe you only have one defender. Um, but still, also, like, even if they do send, like, a big attacker in, then there's the higher likelihood that that character has fade on it, and dishonoring it is going to have a greater effect on future turns, even if, especially if it's their champion, even. Yeah, I think this is an excellent card. Out of the core set, there's no way that you're not going to take this as Crane. With, the, yeah, with, the, like, a limited amount of province choice. And this is, a uh, this is an air. So it, even if you're if you're taking Seeker of Air and you're able to take two, then you can go with this, and you can go with like the Fertile Fields as well, or Manicured Gardens if you want a bit more Fate instead of cards. Yeah, but I think the effect this is doing is more valuable than the Fate or the cards for a Crane player. Yeah, I, I like going I like I like Seeker of Air and then this and the the or, or sorry the Fertile Fields, but yeah, I think I think this is strong. This is this is good, especially if they do a big attack and this is face down and they don't know, and then. Uh, they actually just break this and dishonor like four characters, maybe unicorn lion. Like that's it. That's a huge swing. So. Yeah, yeah. And if you're able to get some characters honored who are sticking around, even if the characters you defend with don't stick around, you're adding to your honor pool. So it's just improving basically that resource for you to spend. You can swing it for cards. You can even um, push twenty five potentially. 25, um, or just put yourself away from zero, even like which Crane is very good at doing. I, I think this is. I think this is always going to be a very strong argument to, to have included in in a Crane uh, set of provinces. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Beautiful artwork again. Yeah, so that's an excellent card. One of the better province cards in the core set. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I agree. All right. On to the units, uh, and the first one we're going to look at is the Asahina Artisan. Yeah, so first character, and uh, right off the bat, she is uh, one cost. 
She has z uh, zero for military skill and a zero for political skill, but important to note, um, as you mentioned earlier, those aren't dashes, so you can send her into conflicts if you if you so choose. She has the Shujenga and the Air traits, two glory, and then uh, then her action. Uh, yeah, action during a conflict, bow this character. Choose another crane character. That character gets plus three political until the end of the conflict. Um, so the Shujenga is relevant. That's a very relevant trait. Uh, the two glory is excellent. You have the potential to honor her in a crane deck. Now she's a one cost unit with two military, two political. Yeah. So that's really good. And I actually think especially on a character that's a zero zero, because if she's dishonored, she you're not. Go lower. Yeah. So I think it's especially good in this instance. Yeah, and then her ability to um you know, if you don't think you're gonna be able to honor her, or maybe it's just more impactful to get that plus three, um, she can give another one of your characters plus three. She doesn't have to be in the conflict itself to do that it's just an action um and i really like that it's an action you can take during the battle it's because it's changing the battle map because on that turn if there's two political challenges like or conflicts like yours and your opponents then you can always like provided that she's standing you can always threaten it like am i going to use it in this battle are you going to overcommit and i'll just use it in the next one like I think you have a lot of flexibility there. To an extent, but there's only going to be two political conflicts in a turn. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, in the first one, like, if they know you have this, maybe they overcommit to account for it, and you're like, you know what, I'll use this if there's, if you, you it looks like you're going to declare one. That's like, true, but you have to have a decent amount of units down for that to work. Yeah, yeah, so you're not, I, this is a, this is a character that she, she gets better the more other characters are out. Like, if it's just her and one other one that's already not... Well, it's still fine. It's adding three to that one, but it's not nearly as good because you can't really threaten tricks. There are ways to play around her. So there are cards that, um, you know, blank text boxes. There are cards that negate a character from using their ability. And she is a one uh, cost of character, so you can assassinate her. Uh, yeah. If the battle is ongoing. Uh, but that said... She costs one. So um, that's better than your two-cost character getting assassinated. Yeah. I think it's a good card. Uh, certainly out of the core. This is missily making the cut in a crane deck. Um, after that... Um, it, it'll I'm be in competition certain... with those other one-cost cards. Uh, yeah. So I think the more one-cost crane cards that come out, it'll be harder and harder deck-building choices to be made. But as of now, I, I, I quite like the card. Uh, yeah, as do I. And I think the Doji Whisper, as the card pool expands, is the card pool that could, or is the card that could be in competition for that deck space. Uh, and I'm going to say, uh, off the bat, I like this card more. Uh, so it's a one cost card. It's a zero three uh, strength card, three political strength. It's quirkier traded, and it has one glory. Yeah, so I would, I would say. Uh, the courtier trait is more important than the Shujenga, which we saw on the Asahina Artisan. And it's definitely more important in a crane deck. Yes, because you're going to have those neutral conflict cards, uh, like, uh, for, or Elwit, you definitely need a courtier. For shame, I think you do, but it, it's, it's going to help you trigger your effects. Um, on top of that, uh, there's no need to play around to get a unit to three strength. This just has it printed on the card. You don't need to waste an action in the combat to do it. Um, you're not going to get potentially negated if you're the attacker and something happens to the unit that you're expecting to add three. Um, and then suddenly it doesn't. This is just going to be in the battle. It's adding three. You don't need its text box doing anything. Yeah, or I'm thinking, like, if you use this to add three to a character and that ki that character you add it to is assassinated, like, if it is a two-cost or less character, like, this this is just a character on its own. It's going to be good when you play it. You're not relying on anything else, like you said. And, yeah, one one glory, which I think is about what... I, I, th I think that's just reasonable. It's about what you'd expect out of this card, so... I really like this card. This is going in every crane deck I play. And even I, as I the card three of it as well when we play it, yeah. Even as the card pool expands, this is a card that should be very competitive for that deck space. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. And here's another uh, another 
quite good one. Uh, and this is the uh, the Brash Samurai. So the Brash Samurai uh, costs two, two military skill, one political skill, Bushi trait, which which is good. Maybe not quite as good as the courtier trait, but but relevant. Uh, you need to have you need to have both Bushis and courtiers in your deck, no matter what faction you're playing. Yeah, whereas most co the courtiers will be your political, Bushis your gonna be your military characters. Um, yeah, two glory here, uh, which which I think is good in the crane. There's gonna be lots more ways of honoring your characters, and then yeah, an action as well. Yeah. Uh, so his strength is two military, one political, and then he has the action. While this character is your only participating character in a conflict, honor this character. Uh, that's great. You're obvious. He's obviously going to be your only participating character in a conflict. Um, and if you really want to get other characters in, there's ways to do it. I mean, you could take this action while he's in by himself. Then you could, for instance, favorable ground a character in, play a character out of your hand into the conflict. Charge comes to charge mind. a character in, although that card is on the banned list for competitive play. Yeah, so definitely good to note that. Um, so I mean, you can get this guy up to say four military strength, and then add after that. You just have to time your actions correctly. Even if you don't do that, you have a two cost character at four military strength. That just represents great value. He's also honoring himself. It doesn't cost you a card or anything to do it. So you're going to be gaining the honor when he leaves play, provided so he stays honored. Yeah. Even if he's assassinated after you do this, they've used their assassination and you've netted an honor. It's going to hurt you in the conflict, obviously, but just trying to find the bright side of that. Yeah, because they're going to be losing three, so now you're getting a swing of four honor. Like, it's becoming less and less enticing. Um, I think this is an outstanding card. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, it's... If, if they can't defend this, like, you're you're likely breaking a province with this, with most of them being at four. And if, if he goes in alone and they don't they don't block it or they can't... Even if they do block it, you easily have the threat of uh, chucking a flying katana or he's something a, like that on He's out at a six. Your two-cost character, two cards have been spent, and you've got six military strength uh, and honored status down. For that, it'll only even be one card, really, because this being a dynasty card even with one conflict card spent yeah no this is this is an excellent card yeah this this is the kind of card that's really annoying uh if you're playing against it oh yeah when you see it coming in and you're like my province is gonna break if i don't deal with this two cost, cost thing character. yeah uh the next card is another two cost card uh the stat line is worse in terms of strength it's a two zero um it is bushy traded as well scout traded and it has less glory. It only has one glory. Yeah, so there's some clans where less glory will obviously crab, and then there other times it's like if I think I'm going to be getting dishonored, I actually don't mind that. But with Crane, you really do want those higher glory counts with the um, number of ways in which you can honor your characters. So he doesn't have an action. This is just printed card text. While this character is attacking alone, treat the defending province as if its printed text box were blank except for traits. Very thematic card. He's he's a scout. You're not going to get burned by their province flipping if it, he goes in alone. Uh, I like the theme a lot of this on this card a lot, but that being said, we just saw the Brash Samurai, and I think the Brash Samurai is just a better card than this. And they're filling a similar role at, in that they're both two cost characters that you're putting in your deck to help with your military skill. I agree. I like this card more, though. I think there's space for it in your deck. I mean, compare it to a Sapoon Guardsman, which is a two dash with no ability. It does cost one, though. Uh, yeah, but I do. I do like the ability to have. Uh, this guy go into a political conflict if for some reason you need more. I do like I do like this more in the early game where you want to see what provinces are without getting hurt by them. And this is just a unit you play. Maybe you put one fade on it and now you are flipping two provinces. You, you're scouting them, as it were. Um, and you know you're not going to get hurt uh, mm -hmm. by what, whatever's flipping. I think it's a good way to play around low strength provinces they have as well so provinces like shameful display um 
you know you're not going to get hurt, but it's also only a three strength province. So now there's the threat that you put um, a fine katana on this guy and you've broken them being able to trigger anything off it. So they're, they're going to have to defend that. Um, it's obviously less good than the Brash Samurai. Yeah, and that's my issue with the card is that the deck space, with if you're playing with three core sets, my opinion is that the deck space is pretty tight and... We'll get to some other car some other two cost cards, which I also think are better than this. So I think this is already kind of on the on the fringe, but I agree with what you said about you mentioned earlier that the shameful display it being a good one, that you're not gonna get burned by that. Like there there's there's instances where I think it's really good. I just I really don't think it's great if it's flipping in the late game and then if you have it in your deck that can happen and I don't know. I'm I'm not as sold on this card. I don't think it's a card you're putting three of it in your deck if you have three core sets. Um, but I do like the card being in the game. If there's very punishing provinces in the card pool, this is a card you're going to want. That's true. I, 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 I really like the theme of the card, too. I like, I like what it's doing. And yeah, like you said, uh, I, I think it does, it does have its place in some decks. <coughs> All right. And the Crane have another two cost character here they've got quite a few it's the doji gift giver and it has the inverse traits of the cautious scout it's a zero two uh also <laughs> one glory uh and it's core gear traded yeah so uh the doji gift giver it has the action while this character is participating in a conflict give your opponent one fate Ooh, that it's not good but we'll see what the effect is that opponent must choose an choose a ready participating character he or she controls, bow that character. So that is a very, very powerful effect for the cost of uh, not spending a fate, but actually giving it to your opponent. So it is a, a swing of two fate, essentially, as you're losing one and they're gaining one, but it's a really strong effect. Yeah, it's really good. Core gear traded, obviously, very good. Um, but if you're playing an opponent who doesn't have a big swarm of characters, a dragon deck comes to mind. Yeah, this is um, going to hit hard. The, this is excellent. And you need to have cards like that around. Um, you know, this card is really going to punish um, a deck that's not running a lot of uh, characters going into play at once. And for that alone, it's worth having the option to play this. Um, yeah, I believe they call it the tower in this game, where you just have, like, one or two characters and with, it, like, a tower of just attachments on them. Even if this character is going up against, say, kind of Swarm, um, it's going to do something. You don't have to trigger the ability. It is core tier trigger, so you can play events off it. It has two strength, uh, so that's decent. One glory. Um, but even if you pay one uh, to change the, the math of a battle and you know, remove one or two political strength from their side, allowing you to win uh, the conflict and uh, trigger a ring effect. That's probably going to be stronger than the swing of fate. Worth yeah. it. Yeah. And even, like, although it's a politically uh, tailored character, you could still do this effect in the military challenge. Like, we talked about the Crab Champion earlier. He goes in at a seven. and Well, Crab's a bad example because they're going to have some other ones. But... But still, like, you, you could use this in a military challenge if they have a big, beefy military character uh, coming at you, like, alone. Yeah, it's it's really going to change the way your, your opponent has to declare attacks and, and declare defenses against you. And there's no, like you said, there's no conditions, really, on how you use this, apart from the fact that you have to pay a fate and the character has to be in the battle. But there's, if you want this character to be in the battle, it can be. Yeah, I really, really like this card. Yeah, I do as well. So, uh, as Hal mentioned, there are a number of uh, two-cost characters in the Crane Clan, and we have another one here, another good one, but we'll get to that. And this is the Savvy Politician. So she has one military skill, two political skill, the Courtier trait, one glory, and she has the reaction after this character is honored, choose a character, honor that character. It's immediately worth noting her own stats are not overwhelming. I think that's intentional. But yeah. they're they're very usable for a two-cost character. One, two is good. One glory is good. Courtier is a nice trait. 
Um, but I this I think this is my favorite character in the Crane deck. Um, your deck should have a ton of ways of honoring uh, your own characters, and now you're just getting excellent efficiency. Um, you're getting a free honor. So you're making, say, your way of the crane. Instead of it says honor one character, if you have the solid savvy politician in play, it basically says honor two characters. And now that's great value. For a zero cost card, like, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, your opponent might not see it coming. Um, I mean, two characters suddenly being honored. One has to be her. She only has one glory, but it's still going to swing something a little bit. Um, it is important to note, this is essentially a one-time effect, as once you've honored her, unless she becomes dishonored, then you're not going to get it again. But there are cards that come to mind that you can play around that. Uh, Spies at Court, for example. Dishonor her to put her back to neutral status to discard two cards when you're in the political. Then now you can use her ability again. So, like, even out of the core set, there's some clever shenanigans you can do. Yeah, or you can just, you know, oh, I don't have uh, any kind of trick that's going to let me do that in my conflict hand. I'm just not going to play Fate on her, and I'm going to have this as a one-time effect. She's going to leave play Honored, and it's going to boost my Honor. Yeah, again, we talked about it. Crane Clan, just lots of ways of just keeping your keeping a good amount of Honor, because you're, you're getting them as your Honored characters that they can play. Thoughts uh, on the card overall? Again, really good. I think um, this... The Brash Samurai and the Doji Gift Giver, those three all at two costs, I think all really good cards, which is why I'm a little less sold on the Cautious Scout. And not even really good cards, really good two cost cards in the context of what other clans have at the two cost range. Yeah, I, I think the three of those uh, I'm a big fan of. Well, don't speak too soon because we've got one last oh, one at two cost. Uh, this is our first unique character. It's Deoji Marishima. He's a Bushi, a Scout. He's a 3 1 which is a pretty solid stat line for a two-cost character. He's got one glory, and he has action. Choose a face-down card in one of your provinces. Turn that card face up. Okay. I mean... Okay, there's there's the Lion Clan um, holding, which does a similar effect, the same effect, but it's turning two. It's a holding, so that's a little different. But the thing is, I like that effect more in the Lion Clan. But it's never, this is never not going to be a good effect. Um, you can obviously use, you're probably going to use, you're probably going to play him, and then, or if he's already in play and you put fate on him, you're going to play your first card off your provinces, and now you have a face down card. He's just, he's basically giving you five cards to play off your provinces instead of four, and having options is nuts. Yeah. I, I, I agree. That is really good. Um, or it's quite good. I don't know. I, I don't want to be too liberal with the word really, but he has a good stat line. Um, a two for three military is fairly good. Um, I, again, I think I think it's the same issue as the Cautious Scout, where the Crane have the, some really, really good two-cost cards, and I don't think this is at that level as the other three we were just talking about. I don't agree, because the Crane don't have a lot of uh, solid military options in that cost range. Yeah. I don't know. We might be a, we might disagree a little bit about this card, but I'm not as sold on it. I think it's a good card. I think it's always going to be tempting to put this in a deck at two cost. Um, whether you're putting three copies of them in is a different matter. Um, but maybe you are. I mean getting to keep him in play longer isn't that bad, and the cost of duplicating him, as it were, uh, isn't even really a card, because he can just replace that card on yeah. the provinces. If you are duplicating him, then just flip the one you just duplicated him with. Yeah. I mean, any deck, actually, where, you're dupl where you want to be duplicating a lot of units in play, this could be a nice uh, card to have around. Yeah. It's just seeing more cards, seeing more options, getting your, like, your Doji Hitaru dupli duplicate. You're, you're just getting, you're cycling through your cards a little bit more quickly. Yeah, I like it. So on to the next one. And this is the, uh, now we're into the three cost range. So these characters are a little more expensive. Um, and this is the Doji Challenger. Not a unique card. Uh, three military skill, three political skill. 
the traits Bushi and Duelist, a two glory, and then an action as well. While this character is attacking, choose a character controlled by your opponent. Move that character to this conflict. I'll say I'll, I'll say on the outside I like this card the least of the three cost crane cards, and that's because crane, a faction like or a clan like Scorpion, there's value to moving weak units to and from the conflicts. For crane, not really. Um, I mean, there's value just in terms of simple gameplay. Um, oh, you know, I'm going to make you overcommit to defending this Doji Challenger attack. Now you don't have people to defend my next attack. Um, or if they're planning on using that character on an attack, now you've kind of just wasted them. But it's, it's an action limited to while you're attacking, so you, ha you pretty much have to have this character attacking. For stat lines decent for three it's not it's not blowing you away it's about right at just a neutral level i would say i wouldn't say it's bad i wouldn't i also wouldn't say it's good the two glory is good but i don't know if this character is your first choice to honor uh because the four costs some of the other three costs even and your five costs generally are more impactful i think if you have a limited amount of honor status uh, manipulation going on yeah, which ultimately you do. You don't just have unlimited ability to honor characters. Um, if she's honored, she's a 5-5, five, five, though, for 3, which is nothing to sneeze at. I don't, I don't dislike the card. I just um, I feel neutral about it. I, I don't think... I think you could put it in a deck. It's going to be completely fine. Maybe it'll be, even be very good. Uh, but I like... A lot of the other cards more yeah no i get that and like ultimately it is a game where you have a 40 card uh dynasty deck and 40 to 45 yeah sorry that's right but either way like you you ultimately do have to make choices on so every card really is just compared to the other cards in that clan that you could be taking instead and i think like you said we'll get to some ones that i think are a little bit better the more I think about this card, I actually do think it's quite strong because it's very good the fewer your the fewer characters your opponent has out. And I think out of the core set, we'll get to the Dragon Clan in a future video, but um, I think the the Dragon Clan is extremely strong out of the core set and they're not gonna have as many characters out and now you're forcing if they if they've already defended the Doji Challenger, you can pull another character in and now if this is so Q and sure they'll win the ring if but if they're de the defender, they won't get to trigger it. You've kind of really screwed up their turn if you're the first player and you do this first. Um, it's not as good against a clan like Unicorn or Lion, where there's going to be a lot of characters out. But I think against any clan where they don't have as many out, I think it becomes more and more powerful. I don't disagree. I just think the other three cost characters that Crane has are better. Yeah, this is a card uh, I definitely want to use more and and really try to try to see what I can do with it. But I, I think there is a lot of potential here. Here we have what's I think definitely the best three cost character that Crane's bringing to the table, and that's Kakita Asami. She's a unique character, three cost. Yeah, yeah, three three cost. Um, one military skill, three political skill. The courtier trait, which, like we said before, great trait to have, especially in the Crane Clan. Uh, two glory, and quite a good action here. While this character is participating in a political conflict, if you count more political skill in the conflict than your opponent, take one honor from that opponent. So, <laughs> I mean, that it's very good. I don't think anything more needs to be said. I mean... The honor, the honor is either going to stop you from losing, push you towards winning, or allow you to be playing with more cards in your hand than them. You should always have more political skill in the conflict as a crane player than pretty much anyone else. Maybe Scorpion. Phoenix or Scorpion. But the thing is, you can trigger this action whenever you want. So you can time this at even the one point of the conflict where you're higher. Yeah, naturally in, in L5R, like, a lot of the conflicts will have a back and forth where you play something, you get ahead, they're responding, and like if you do get ahead at some point and then 
maybe they take some kind of other action and you can just you, you can just get this off it's it's essentially the effect of one of the options of the effect of winning the air ring just on your card yeah agreed yeah um yeah just like if you if you watched the the previous game we uploaded on um, you got to see this card in effect and just really very powerful and now we're into the four cost range so the first four cost character we've got uh here is the asakina storyteller so two military strength four political strength three traits courtier shujenga air uh two of the first two being excellent traits yeah shujenga gives you option with the um cloud their mind courtier we've talked a lot about that already but even if you wanted to take Phoenix conflict cards into your deck. Now you have a Shujenga character. Yeah, that's a good point. Which they have some quite good ones that trigger off of Shujenga. So yeah, that's a good, that's a really good example. Uh, two Glory, good in the Crane Clan, like we've talked about on other cards. Um, and then Sincerity, when this character leaves play, draw one card. More cards are always really good. Cards are valuable when you're exchanging honor off of what you bid. Each card is essentially worth an honor, so that's really good. On um, each honored, uh, also just the passive text, each honored crane character you control gains sincerity, which is the ability which he has. I really like him. I mean, four cost is a lot, but the nice thing is he's not a unique character, so you have a couple of a uh, couple of these down if you wanted. Um, it also doesn't limit you in terms of um, if you pull another, you don't your only option isn't to duplicate. The thing I would say about that is your character couldn't have sincerity twice. So I actually don't think that's all that good. Um, I, I like the 2-4 stat line with the 2 glory. For 4, though? I don't know. If you're looking at the champions, which cost one more, they're... Uh, we'll get to the champion, but... I don't know. I think if you have two in play, I actually... Do, I, I think you're really getting the most mileage out of his ability, and if you have two in play, you're not really getting much out of that second yeah, ability. Yeah, that's a fair comment. Um, but I think it's nice to have the option. So, to, if you know you have more of these in your deck, you don't have to put, like, three fate on him when you play him. Yeah, if it's an effect that you really want. Because... You want to get value out of this effect, and you should get value out of this effect if you're playing Crane. I agree. Yeah, I... My argument to that is you do kind of want to put Fate on your four-cost characters. Like, you, if you've already invested four, you do want that character sticking around, because each Fate you invest in a character is more impactful when you're keeping a higher-cost, better stat line character around for future turns. Yeah, but if you pull this guy turn one suddenly that's your turn that's not great no i don't really like i don't really like playing a four cost on the first turn yeah i mean if you if you see him right away you have the option to mulligan it but maybe you just get a bad draw you maybe you mulligan into it and have nothing else um it's not blowing me away but i think it's it's a nice option to have to put in the deck especially as the card pool gets bigger, the card will get better. Yeah, As there's more cards that allow you to be honored. Suddenly, this could be going off a lot. Yeah, suddenly you could have a deck that's really honoring things extremely efficiently. Very efficiently. Um, yeah, I think it's good. Uh, sincerity is good. More cards are good. And that's uh, never a bad thing to have. And if I recall correctly, that's actually the only four-cost crane character you're eligible to play in competitive play out of the core set because the guest of honor i am pretty sure is on the banned list are you sure uh banned or restricted for sure i think it's i think it's restricted but yeah uh, we'll, we'll have to check this we'll yeah. throw a link in the description below yeah, just on... consult the banned and uh restricted list of cards on the ffg faq if you are going to play competitively yeah and you can even just scroll down below this video and we'll we'll clarify what this what this card is so, needless to say, it's a very good card since it's ended up on that list in some capacity. Um, we've got it at 4 cost. It's a 1-4, so a little weaker stat line than the Asagina Storyteller. 
uh, one glory, so a little weaker in that regard as well. It is a court here. Only one trait, so again weaker in that regard. So this this is this is screaming to me that this is going to be a really good ability. And that ability is while this character is participating in a conflict, opponents cannot play events. <sighs> well, yeah, that. I mean, you're just going to win the conflict. I mean, yeah, like, they can play their ornate fan, but most of the political manip conflict manipulation out of the conflict deck are the events. Outwit, for shame, um, court games. Maybe they have some clan-specific events. Uh, just events are going to hurt you in this game, and now they are literally not allowed to play one in this conflict while the character's in it. Yeah, um... It's worth noting she can go into a military conflict, so it's an adaptable card. If you're playing someone who you know didn't put any political events into their deck, uh, if you don't care about using her to, say, try to break a province or something, you can just give yourself a chance to even win the military conflicts by sending her in there, uh, obviously probably with some other units. And if, you know, the unicorn player can't play their events now, the lion player can't play their events now, you're just giving yourself a chance of winning that conflict, too. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, suddenly they can't play Route, they can't play... Charge, which is on the dying list. Yeah, but if you are just casually playing at home, they're just not going to be able to do that. Um, they can't play Fallen in Battle, even. Um, like, yeah, sudden. I think it's better on the political side, but like you said, it's a good point that, like, you, you can... You, if there, you do have the flexibility there. Yeah, really good card. Yeah, Guest of Honor. And, and with that, it's the last character. The last character on... We've, well, they've saved the champion for last, and uh, that's Doji Hataru. Five cost, three military, six political strength, three glory. Bushi and champion traded. So, relevant traits. Uh, especially the Bushi. Reaction, after you claim a ring during a political conflict in which this character is participating, resolve that ring's effect. Immediately worth noting, it doesn't say while attacking. Yeah, you can. Um, I think I think this card is better while attacking, because I think getting the ring effect twice is extremely good. But, but like, the, fact that the, the fact that she's on the table and you want to do a political conflict as maybe your second conflict, and now you see if she defends and this ring effect gets resolved against me, it's going to be really bad. Um, that could just be the situation that the game is in. It might force you to just not declare that conflict. And now she's coming back at you anyway. Or declare a different ring that isn't the one that you think is also going to really hurt you. Because I'm thinking, yeah, in the example you gave, if you're the second... If I'm the second player with Doji Ataru here, and you, uh, you have like a really good character with one fate on them left, but you wanted to declare Void Ring on against me, now suddenly it's like, well, I'm gonna actually be the one triggering it if I win and I block with her. Like it, it can, it really can screw up what they're trying to do. But yeah, even stronger if she attacks, because then she is double resolving the ring. She should be double resolving the ring because if she's in the conflict, you should be able to win the political challenge. Yeah, and she's not, she's not horrible at military. She's still a three, so if there's some interesting board state where that's what you need to do with her. She can go into that military conflict, but again, usually it's going to be the political. You're going to be trying to resolve a ring twice. You're probably also even breaking a province. It's This card's going to let you have really big swings in the game. I also really like her being at three glory. That isn't usually going to end up hurting you as the crane player it should be pretty easy to get her back into a neutral state, even if someone manages to dishonor her. Yeah, because the thing is, like, if she becomes dishonored, this is immediately you're going to be your priority to at least get her back to neutral, and you're probably going to at least have one card to do that, or suddenly that fire ring looks pretty enticing, and you have that option, even. Um, I think she's one of the best champions. She, I think she's better than Lion Clan's champion, who is her mirror with military, uh, simply because the conflict deck out of the core set has much stronger political manipulation in conflict cards than it does military, especially once you take into account that one of the only really strong military cards 
uh, in the conflict deck is on the banned list and be in charge. Yeah, so that's a good exa That's a good point because those cards are gonna allow you to increase your odds of winning the political challenge, which are all already high with Doji Kitaru uh, attacking, more defending, but in this example, attacking. And yeah, this is Crane is described as an aggro clan, and this is a really aggressive card where you want to be attacking, you want to be winning conflicts, breaking provinces, triggering rings twice, and if, if she gets out on the table, like, it's, it's an instant problem for your opponent. There's very few clans who can defend this, and even the ones that can. Scorpion, the strongest, maybe Phoenix. I mean, they want to be playing that political game too, so it's still a strong counter to whatever they're trying to do. Yeah, because suddenly now they're having to stress about not letting Doji Hitaru win her attack and trigger the ring twice against you, because that is a devastating effect, and now they can't attack as hard politically, and they can't do what they want. They can't really further their agenda as well, so... Yeah. I, I think she's a really good champion. Yeah, I, I agree. I think she's one of the best ones. Yeah. So we're on to the last card um, of the Crane Dynasty uh, deck out of the core set. And it's their only holding. And it's the Artisan Academy. Uh, very nice in keeping with their theme. It's Academy traded, which doesn't seem very relevant. And we've got an action. Uh, or sorry, I should say it adds plus one strength to your province, which is nice. A lot of the holdings, uh, you know, sometimes they add zero. It's not I great. Think, I don't know. I think pretty well all of them are a one. Um, do you know Pyre is a zero? Yeah, I think that's the one zero. Um, I think one is fairly standard, but it is nice. It is at least a one. Yeah. Um, and it does have an action. During the conflict phase, reveal the top card of your conflict deck. Until the end of the phase, you may play that card as if it were in your hand. I think this is, I think this is really good. Um, it's effectively, it's a little bit worse than letting you draw the card because you can't save that card for a future turn. You will have to use it that turn, or else it'll just be flipped back over and ret well, not returned to the top of the deck, but it'll stay there. It's giving your opponent knowledge too of what it is. So I'm thinking of the Phoenix holding the Forgotten Library, where you actually get to draw the card at this before you bid on the dial. I don't think it's as good as the Maybe not Forgotten Library, it's Ain't something. Whatever the library, I don't think it's quite as good as that, but I I, I still think it's quite good. Uh, I agree. Uh, this card is another reason you want Takeda Kazen in your... Or, sorry, uh, not Takeda Kazen. Uh, Deoji Marishima in your deck. Because you want, you want to keep this in play as long as you can, and now instead of being limited with only three dynasty cards to play per turn. Maybe even less if you've got, um, you know, a uh, fortified position or something like that also in play as a holding. Emperor's uh, Storehouse or... Yeah, Imperial Imperial Storehouse. Imperial Storehouse. Yeah. Now he's, he's just making it so there's never a circumstance where you feel pressured into discarding this because he's allowing you to have that flexibility of having a broad range of dynasty cards to play. And I think the Crane... The Crane characters that come in the Dynasty deck are stronger in general than the ones in the Conflict deck, out of the core, at least. Yeah, we'll get to the Conflict deck. I like the Political Rival a lot. I don't really like I agree. the I other agree. one. Yeah. The Steward of Law. Yeah. Um, so he's just letting you access your strong characters while also allowing you to keep this around, buffing a province and buffing your Conflict hand each turn. Yeah. Um, We've, t we've uh, already touched on the value of uh, conflict cards in this game, and this is really good. If you built your conflict deck in a way where you don't have too many high-cost cards in there, you're probably going to be able to find a way to play that card on the turn, and then if you do, it is giving you another card that turn. The only drawback being it's telegraphed to your opponent, but regardless, some that even if it's telegraphed, they're not necessarily going to be able to do much about it. They can play in a way that minimizes it a bit, but it's still going to be good. And I don't mind it being telegraphed, because then you can start bluffing them. Yeah. I, th I think the hidden knowledge is a the bit better. The hidden knowledge is better, but, but if yeah. you can play around the fact that they know it's there. Yeah, and like if it's like, even if it's something simple, like an ornate fan, it's like, okay, even if they know I'm going to do it, I can still just do it. And, and they, you can do it at any point yeah. on any unit. 
they yeah. don't know that still. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a good point. I really nice artwork again. The artwork on all these cards is fantastic. Yeah, the crane. Uh, the the artwork on all of the L five R cards is excellent, but I will say the crane has some really nice ones. Yeah, like Kikita Kazen with like the the sun behind him and the. Oh, I mean all of them really. You could you could pick any one of them. They're 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 all uh, really beautiful artwork. So overall thoughts on the Crane uh, Stronghold, Province, and Dynasty cards that come in the core set? Um, overall thought, I'll start with an overall thought, which is that I think the Crane Clan is one of the stronger ones out of the core set. I think... Top three, I think. Yeah, I... I would agree. I, th I think it's in the top three of the strongest clans out of the core set. Um... I also, I do think it's uh, it's one of the recommended starter decks, and I think it is a, a really good one for someone to learn to play the game with. Um, yeah, you're not going to lose through Loss of Honor, um, simply because there's so many ways to stop that from happening. At least it's going to be quite hard to be wary of what you bid on the dial. If you're putting five every time, you probably will, but you'll you'll figure that out. Uh, you'll figure that out quite quickly. And your your cards are good at something. You don't have to play around it. You are good at political, and you have a strong chance of winning every political challenge. So that's uh, nice for a New York player. Yeah, and like the champion, it's not an overly complicated effect. You just get that ring effect twice. You can you have your reference card of what they do, and really triggering any of the rings twice is is good. Um, so it's good effects. They're fun. You're probably not going to run out of honor. And yeah, again, I think they're a really fun clan to play. Yeah, I'll also say there's a strong theme here. Uh, looking at the cards, you you have a good idea what this clan is. Um, you don't have to read the fiction. You can see, um, you know, they're they're skilled. There's some duelists. There's some artisans. Uh, they care about honor. Yeah. And they're a lot of courtiers. Strong political presence. Yeah, they really care about perfection. You can kind of tell that theme out of the clan. You see. Like with the Artisan Academy, you got the the storyteller really with these tales of guests of honor. They're very classy, like elegant in a way. And yeah, I that's a good point about the theme. I think it's really strong here. Well, again, everyone, we're here with uh, an addendum. Uh, and uh, the observant among you probably noticed Kikita Kazin wasn't covered in the uh, cards we previously discussed. That's because we completely misread what his action was. Uh, so everything we said about him was wrong. That, of course, impacted our assessment of other cards as well, like the Doji Challenger. Uh, the Doji Challenger is better than we said it was in the video. And I, we were comparing it against an unfair standard of what we thought this card was. And I was already giving the Doji Challenger some props there, so I think it's became even a little stronger. But yeah, on, on to Kikita Kazen. He's a unique crane character. He's a three-cost character. He's got three military strength, two political strength, uh two glory which is good for a crane card yeah i mean i would say quite good actually like the only one with three out of the crane i believe is doji hitaru uh i think that's right out of the core side at least oh yeah sorry out of the core is uh what i'm referencing but yeah uh in terms of traits he's got bushi duelist kenshin zen uh, the Bushi trait's a good trait out of the core. Yeah, that's gonna let you trigger on. Um, it's gonna let you trigger route potentially. He is a three, so you could send someone home with route uh, if they're lower skill, equal to and lower, or maybe just lower. I would have to look at route again. Yeah, I think it might be lower. I, I'll. I would have to check that card. Still, uh, you can use him with route. Uh, I mean, route's really the only one springing to mind, but I that. It is, it is a nice trait to have, and it will likely improve over time. The duelist trait as well, I think, will improve over time. Uh, the first pack of the first cycle even has a card, uh, crane card, conflict card, Stamp of the Crane, which grants a character the crane, crane clan. It makes it become a member of the crane clan and uh, grants it the duelist trait, so I imagine the duelist trait will become something relevant, because why else would you just want to give that trait to something? Ken Shinzen, I don't really foresee becoming that impactful, but maybe the game will prove me wrong. So uh, he has an action. While this character is participating in a conflict, 
your opponent must choose a participating character he or she controls. Challenge that character to a military duel. If this character wins, move each character not involved in the duel home. If it loses, send it home. Um, I mean, his strength is underwhelming for a three-cost character. Um, it's an action that might be useful. Um, I mean, you can you can do this in a political challenge, and it's a military duel. Uh, the problem is that your opponent is choosing the character he duels. Yeah, and that's something to pay close attention to. That's actually the mistake we made misreading the card the first time, is that we assumed that you would be choosing the character, so we thought he was much better than he is. Because they are choosing, and they're going to choose their... I would assume they're going to choose their strongest one. So... Um, and, and he's he's going to be really bad in a matchup against Dragon Clan because their strongest one is going to be, you know, if you try to do that action in a political challenge because you're hoping, um, you know, he'll have better military strength and then win that duel, that may not even be the case. You could lose the duel. Or even if you win the duel, that Dragon character probably has political strength, you know, equivalent to his, if not better. Yeah, same argument I think could be made for Phoenix Clan with, because Dragon and Phoenix are the two that most of their characters ha will have similar numbers, similar if not the same skill in military and political. I think he's he gains more utility against a clan that's like Scorpion per se, that's like really much better political, but then some of their really strong political characters will have quite weak military skills. Yes, but what, e even in that kind of matchup, what they could do is just accept that they're losing that duel and then have a character with arguably higher political strength facing off against him one-on-one -on -one having lost the duel. So you can win the duel and you might still lose the challenge just because uh, his base printed political strength is not very good. Yeah, yeah, two is not very high. I like that he has two glory and Crane has more honoring effects than any other clan, and I think he's a good target for honoring because he is becoming a 5-2, which is extremely relevant in both categories then. On top of that, he's a unique card, so you might be able to keep him around longer with the honored status, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, if you're running running more copies of him and he's flipping up on your provinces. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he's also has some interesting use against Lion Clan, where if they don't have um a Koto Totorio and it's just maybe a bunch of lower skill ones but they're swarming you if he just beats one of those lower skill ones in a duel you could send all the rest home I think that would be really good yeah you could even uh if he has to face off against a Koto Totori so be it if you win that duel you, you might still lose the challenge because he's going up against a champion and then at the in the actual challenge uh resolution but you might save your province from being broken because you've removed the horde. Um, no, no, because if he, if he loses to Totori in the military duel, he's just sent home. No, so you win the duel, but you lose the challenge on strength after the other cards are sent home. How's Kazen going to be Totori in a military duel? Because you're going to bid high on your dial. Oh, I mean... Totori's starting with a three lead, though. Yeah, but even if you even but if a you lion, bid a two, but a lion player might not but, want to be bidding high on the honor. But they don't even have to. Even if he bid a two, even if they bid a two and you bid a five, it would be a tie, and then no one would win the duel. So you would, as long as the lion player didn't bid a one. Yeah. Okay. Well, if he faces off against the honored general or something. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, the Honored General's Honored, so he's a 5. I guess then you'd have to bid a 3, which maybe they don't want to do. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Um, he's definitely good against Unicorn, because they don't have the honor to spare to bid on that kind of thing, and they're, pl they're playing the same kind of uh, game that Lion is, of sending a large attack at you. Yes, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think against Unicorn, there's going to be like a lot of, like, they're just going to be like... Oh, it's the Moto Youth and the um, Aggressive Moto are coming in or something. And it's like, actually, even then, each of them are three and you're tied with him. I guess the argument is that 
Not you're just crane your mouth more to more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's probably best against Unicorn. Do you need to put cards in your deck to be good against Unicorn? No. Maybe later down the road, once we're two cycles in, well, we are numerous cycles into the game, but if you're following along with uh, with us at the point we're at, uh, no, Unicorn is not all that strong. I think you already mentioned it. There's, there's some utility against Scorpion, but the problem is you might still end up losing the challenge. Yeah, yeah, because they're they could be like I'm blanking on the Scorpion Champion's name, but he's a two seven, so he would he would probably be you. Like yeah, yes, you there's the Asahina Artisan we've seen, which can increase yeah, the, Hazen's political strength. The Asahina Artisan has a really good synergy with him. Yeah, Asahina Artisan, Way of the Crane, obviously just good synergy with any crane card that then has two or more glory. I would say. Uh, he's decent against crab if you attack crab and they defend with uh, like a lot of characters in a military challenge, uh, for instance. Uh, and you know they want to be buffing all of those characters with their stronghold. So if you're able to remove um, some there, the problem is that crab have a lot of really good military characters. So you're probably losing that duel. There's probably going to be a good one they're blocking with that then they're going to duel with. Yeah. There, there, there's an interesting use here that it's if Kazen loses the duel send it home, it's he is not sent home bowed. So there there's a play that you could a play that could be made where Yeah, you just bid one on your dial, force them to overbid. They overbid and maintain their attack. And then you use Kazen in another challenge. Yeah, I mean I, I don't think he's a bad card. Is he consistently gonna be having uh significant impact on the game i don't know yeah my my initial impression is that my initial yeah, impression... i don't know he's, he's i i actually want to use him more because it, it is there it looks like there's some interesting things going on here my initial impression of the two other three cost crane characters in the core set is that they are quite a bit better than him yeah, I think this is like more of a situational card where like there's just gonna be those games where suddenly you're looking at the game state and it's like, wait a minute, Kikita Kazen's about to send three characters. Huh? Well, maybe not. Maybe three stretching it, but it could happen. Yeah. Um. Interesting card. Anything else you want to say about him? No, I think we pretty well covered it. Like, there's a lot going on here. I think like this is. Out of all the Crane Dynasty cards, this is the card that I think there's the most going on and, like, the most to think about here. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the other card effects are pretty straightforward. Um, I think it's really interesting, and I think it's something that definitely is playable and is good. Maybe not as good as the other ones, but I think there's things to be experimented with. He's, he's, he's a card that's really good if you like start honoring him or buffing his strength, but then I think what you've got to say is, well, that's true of most of the yeah, I was characters. About, I was about to say most characters, once they become honored, it's like, I'm pretty sure the Doji Challenger is too glory, so I'm pretty sure the Doji Challenger is a 5-5 five five when it's honored. So, I mean, yeah, the same can be said for most. And three cost the Doji Challenger is always going to be useful because you are choosing the character that you pull into the conflict. Now, you don't even have to trigger the ability if you just want to, you know, win that conflict based on what's on the table, but you can say your best character is coming into the conflict, now it's not coming back at me. That's yeah. always going to be useful. This is like, maybe you can work away where it's really useful, but there's another card costed at three that is like, it's hard to misuse that card effect. It's the opportunity cost, again, of filling a deck spot that you look at and it's like, this could be something else. And it's it's, it's filling the deck spot at that three cost slot. So there is, there is limited space there. They're competing for the same deck space. Yeah. Yeah, like you could run a little bit of a lower cost curve and run him instead of an extra four cost card. Like there's, I, he's playable. I think he, I think yeah. he's it's yeah. just I don't disagree yeah. with that. It's just uh it's hard to see him, you know, being taken as a three of or something when there's such strong characters at three costs already just in the core. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that assessment. But there you have it. There's Kikita Kazen. So that rounds up our uh 
preview of the Crane uh, Dynasty uh, Stronghold and Province cards from the core set. Um, hopefully the video is useful for you, uh, you know, whether you're already playing L5R and it's just, uh, you know, giving you uh, some, some new thoughts about cards, uh, where some synergies might be, or if you're thinking of picking up the game and, uh, you know, are, are interested in taking a look at all the cards that you're going to get for Crane Clan in terms of a Dynasty uh, deck. Yeah, maybe this is a clan you're particularly interested in. Uh, very fun clan to play. Everyone I know who's played them so far is, well, you included, has been a been a big fan. So, yeah, fun clan, good cards, powerful cards, and a lot of interesting things going on. Yeah, good theme, I would say as well. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. Well, uh, yeah, I guess closing remarks. Uh, well, yeah, just that we'll be back uh, with uh, more of these videos. Obviously, first the Crane uh, Conflict cards from the core, so we'll round out the Crane cards, and then we'll move on to the Lion Clan. So uh, if you're really interested in Lion Clan, uh, that should be out uh, maybe in a week or two. Or if you're a big Crane player and you just want to see what your, uh, your biggest rival, what you're up against, uh, that ch yeah, check out the Lion Clan. Yeah, uh, until then, uh, feel free to share your thoughts on these cards in the comments, uh, and uh, if you don't have any thoughts, we'll uh, see you next time. Yeah, take care. Thank you guys for watching.